Okay, so continuing on with the last video, now let's do this problem, negative 3x times 4x with the algebra tiles. So the only difference between this and the last problem we just did is that, well, we're still multiplying, but now we're going to multiply with a negative number and see what that means, it's telling us the negative number of x's. So I'm going to make a grid again and then fill in the area, and that's going to be my answer. So negative 3x can be represented as negative 3x's, or 3 negative x's. So there's 3 going down. And then going across, which you're not going to see all of them, I'll move these over, end up overlapping. You're going to have times 4x, which means I'm going to have 4 positive x's going across. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 4. I can just see those, just barely. Okay, so we got negative 4, and here's our, uh, I mean, positive 4, and there's a negative 3. When I fill in the area, what I have to do here is I have to think about each place where a square will go um, and think about whether it's going to be, I know a square fits there, but do I know whether it's negative or positive? And the way I think about that is I have to think about this part of the border times that times the border, that part of the border, which is negative 1x times positive 1x. Well, a negative times a positive equals a negative, so I'm going to put a negative one there. And the same thing goes here. Now I'm thinking about this square. I'm putting it as red because this is, again, negative 1x times positive 1x, which is going to get me a negative times a positive, which is a negative. Same thing here. I have a negative times a positive. It's going to get me a negative. So I'm putting a red square from my third square down. And this pattern is going to continue because I will always have green across the top and red on the side. So everything's going to turn out to be negative because I'll have a negative times a positive. And when I keep doing this and filling them all in, I'm going to find that I have 12x squares, but they're all on the red side, which means they're all negative. So what I will have is negative 12x squared. Another row is going to, or another column needs to come here, but I don't have tiles. Oop. Here's another one, and so on. I would just keep filling this in. Um, so I'm going to take these away and show the algebra for it now. So what we just did was negative 3x times 4x. When I count up all the red squares that I have here, what I end up with is negative, tw I have 12 negative x's. It's 12 red x's, x squares, sorry. Tw negative 12 x squared is my answer. And sure enough, if I count up all my red squares, I will have 12 of them on the red side, which makes them negative 12. So negative 12 is my answer, but now let's look at this algebraically. Again, it's sort of like combining like terms, but in a slightly different way because we're multiplying. So I can combine the numbers and multiply those together. And when I do that, I get negative 3 times 4 gets me negative 12. Then I can combine the x's, and when I do that, I get x times x, which is x squared. So here I multiply the numbers, I got negative 12. And multiply the x's, and I get x squared. And my total answer is negative 12x squared. I can't do anything else with these. I can't combine these any further because they're not like terms. This is a number, and this is a variable, and that's an exponent for that variable. All right, so let's take that thinking, and we'll actually end up doing an easier one. <laughs> um, so now let's do pull this in half so we can see our problem. Let's do x times. 5x. Okay. So again, think about when we're multiplying, how we're filling in the area of a grid. So here I have x, which stands for 1x, which is basically this. So I'm going to put that across the top, just because I know I'll have more room then to do the 5x. The next number is 5x. I had to multiply it by 5x. So, and it's positive, so I'm going to put these down as green, and I need to put 5 going down the other way, vertical way. Now, if I wanted to, I could put 5x across the top and then 1x down the side. I'm just doing it this way because it'll fit better. And you can't see the remaining two that are going off the screen of the video, but I do have a total of 5x going all the way down, um, all the way down. And when I fill in the area of this grid, 
I am going to fill them in as positive because here I have a positive times a positive. Everything here is positive. It's greens all the way around. So I'm going to make fill them in with x squares, and they're all going to be positive. And it turns out I'm going to end up fitting five of these squares going all the way down. You can't see the remaining two, but they are here on the on the table. And so now I have a row, this big old long or a column of five squares, five positive squares. But they're a square is represented by x squared. So when I write the answer out to this problem, what I end up with is five x squared. And if I count how many squares I have here, sure enough, all I will have five of them. And that makes sense. Okay, so that's how you do that kind of problem. So now let's do two more slightly different ones that just kind of throw a little wrench in the problem. Here I've got two different kinds of problems that also will come up. In this problem, we've talked about what to do when we have 4 times x times 2 times x, but there's a y in this one, and y represents a different variable that we don't have a tile for. And it is a totally different, I mean, if we did have a tile, it would be a totally different tile. So a y is something that, in this case, can be combined with anything else. If there were other y's here, we might be able to combine them, but there is no other like term for a y. A y is different than an x. It represents a different number, or a different unknown number than x. So we can't represent it with the same tiles that we have. So what we can do in this problem is we can solve this part of it and then that y is not going to change, it's just going to stay in the answer. So how would I do 4x times 2x? Well, just like we did before, I'm going to make a column for my border of 4x. So you can't see in the video, but I do have 4 going down. And then I'm going to multiply 2x across. There's 1, and oops, can't see the video. And there's 2. And then when I fill in the area of my 4x times 2x, I'm going to fill them in this positive side squares because I'm only dealing with positive numbers in this problem. And when I fill all the space in all the way down, I'm going to find that I will have 8 squares filling in the area of my 4x by 2x grid. Okay, and so on. It'll continue. So I have eight positive x squares. So let me move these out of the way. We see that from our from the tiles, our answer is eight x squared, and then that y just stays in the problem by itself like that. But let's look at this algebraically again. If you think of this as in terms of like terms, we can multiply the numbers together because they're like terms, and four times two gets us eight. So that is verified. We can multiply an x times an x, and when we do that, we're going to get an x squared, because it means we're multiplying x by itself twice, so that's verified. And then we have times y, which we couldn't really combine with anything else, so it's just left like that, and there it is, and that's verified. So now we have 8x squared y is our answer, and that is how you leave it. You don't do anything else with that y. But another kind of problem you might have is maybe, and this pretty much, we did these kinds of problems when we were working with exponents, but what if you end up with something like 5x cubed times, <coughs> times 6x? So we have 5x cubed times 6x. Um, now we just want to use our algebraic knowledge of what happens to this kind of problem. It's hard to use tiles. We don't have a tile represent x cubed, at least not yet, not in our collection here. So we need to just know that if we're going to be combining like terms in our multiplication problem, this x cubed can be done something with this x, because they're both referring to x's. And this 5 and this 6 can be multiplied together and simplified. So we know that 5 times 6 equals 30. We'll take care of that one right there. I'm going to draw a line through these so we can see we took care of those. Then we have x cubed times x. Well, when we were working with exponents, we knew that when you're multiplying um, x's with different exponents, you can just simply add the exponents. And the reason why that works is because we're saying how many x's you're multiplying to get your final answer. Well, here we're multiplying 3x's, here we're multiplying 1x. So that means we're multiplying a total of 4x's 